Hello everyone and welcome back. When it comes to showcasing the best builds in Destiny 2, there are many to pick from and choose. Hunters have a lot of successes around these areas because of how flexible they are. So when you bring Orpheus rigs into the game, you get some insane mileage with them. Our build today will focus on granting a run of the mill endgame void hunter build that you can bring anywhere you like and cover whatever you have in mind. If you're doing the new dungeon the master for example, this build will cover you for survivability via invis and damage reduction, damage via tether and exotics, and near infinite super regen back to back usage via Orpheus. Here's a great way to start the year with a bang. To start, you're going to want to have Vanishing Step where dodging makes you invisible. Then you'll want Styles Executioner where defeating a weakened enemy grants true sight and invis. I would usually have Trapper's Ambush for the team support. But just having one main way of going in this should be enough for the solar players to make do. What this does instead is allow my tether and smoke grenade to debuff targets while also giving me a free invis if I defeat them while under the effect. Something like this is handy for when the situation gets risky and you need to tie down enemies long enough to save your allies while also dealing with them at the same time. For fragments, we are using Echo Obscurity where doing a finisher on a target makes you invisible. Echo Remnants where your lingering grenade duration are extended, Echo Persistence where void buffs applied to you last longer, and Echo Starvation where picking up an orb of power grants devour. The Echo Obscurity, Remnants and Persistence is going to be a must have when focusing on the Hunter Invis section. The last fragment slot leaves you with whatever you have in mind, although having a free to access devour does help with toughening situations. I did also find that Echo of Harvest works out really well for the build with how often you'll be taking out weakened targets. A free, overpower and void breach does go a long way for us and our team, and with certain combos in mind, you can make each debuff created worthwhile for you. For mods and stats, having a high resilience and discipline stat will help with surviving with certain ending content you have in mind. Your mobility and strength will also play a part in the build but you won't need much focus since we have certain mods to help them out. Resilience at tier 10 will grant us a 30% damage reduction in game, which is very important for the survival of the player and build. Although invis will help, having a high resilience stat will mean you'll be able to survive certain one shots hits compared to not having a high stat at all. A discipline at tier 10 will grant you a 1 minute 16 cooldown when using vortex grenades, which are quite high to use and maintain. However, we do have ways to reduce its effects. For example, having a grenade kickstart will grant us a 34.4% grenade energy return on 4 armor charges. We can increase this to a 38.4% if we add another charged up mod to the mix, but this would mean you have to remove your ammo reserves and resistance mod for the space. Then we have impact induction that grants us a 12% return. And then having the distribution mod will grant us a 4% ability energy back for all, which is low, but still feasible with how often we can use our class ability. Lastly, you then have our tether that will not only debuff targets, but also grant you ability energy back from kills made. So overall, you're given stat may be low, but can be easily fixed over game time. Both mobility and strength are low at a measly tier 2. But we do have bolstering detonation that will grant us back a 12% class ability return via grenade usage. Although we will be using the stats actively, we won't be using it too often to the point it may harm the build. This will then leave you room for additional mods, such as charged up giving us a plus 1 to armor charges held. Then having stacks on stacks will grant us a 2 orbs of power collection rather than 1. Having connect siphon will allow us to create orbs of power while on the go while powerful attraction will make it easier to collect said orbs while on the go as well. Lastly, having Ashes to Assets will help with building up super energy on top of our current exotic, while having Heavy Ammo Finder will keep our heavy option available at all times. Now lastly, weapons being used will be the Wish and the Bow. The following is exceptional when being used for endgame content that involves a slew of tough enemies to face. 90% of the times you will see players using the bow to take on GMs, as it both provides a good amount of damage, anti barrier capability, good range, and great effectiveness against a multitude of targets. So, when being used for a Terror Hunter build, it actually makes the following one of the best combos to run when you want to maximize efficiency in game. Of course, Wishkeeper and the Monarch are also secondary options to pick, 
the wish gender is best for just raw power. For a heavy after combination with redirection and reconstruction as perks, this is the ideal god lore that many players will want to get as it will continuously build your ammo capacity up but also giving you a nice damage boost on top of it. Pairing this with Terra will allow the max capacity machine gun to really let loose in terms of damage as this alone could take on my and mini bosses easily. You can also go with a rocket launcher or even a grenade launcher because of the setup in mind. So if you don't have the following, then your options here are not limited. So if you're an endgame player wanting to speedrun endgame content in general, then the obvious fakes are the go-to Void Exotics that are recommended with achieving that goal in mind. Although many were saying Mobius Quiver with Star Eaters are better with area control and damage overall, Deadfall offers a longer lasting effect on the field that over time adds up the longer it stays out. The following combo is amazing for all content requiring taking on a large group of enemies or bosses all at once, as the tether mechanic for Deadfall allows us to tag multiple enemies, debuff them, get ability energy back per kill made, and also grant us more super energy to repeat again. Now, do you know how good such an effect is when being used in Grandmasters, Raids, Dungeons, or even PvP? It can make certain encounters a K-Walk, even for the new lights to understand, such as the Master Warlord's Ruin on the final boss encounter. Having just one user using this build in the dungeon will reduce the amount of pain of dying so much against the boss and this active turrets. Ultimately, the uniqueness of the combo is how fast you can get your super back up after the first one has been used. With additional super regen mods, it can take you from 5 to 10 seconds to get your second super back up as long as you tag mobile targets at once and then net the kill. This is why using the machine gun such as Commoration and the skill perks works out really well for these scenarios as you can just let loose and build up that super meter in seconds. In fact, pairing this up with Wishander for example with his high vision damage will make short work of the already struggling and stuck enemies in game. It's hugely popular with giving players the breathing room they need to complete wave based encounters that come on by every now and then such as the new coil side mission. Heck, even PvP can see use of the exotic at the right time and moment. However, there's one thing you need to be aware of and that is using the super against most bosses isn't that effective as they do tend to move about a lot, which many of you will have experienced before. Now, of course, it won't make the exotic and super useless, but it will take some time with knowing when to best use it and benefit from it the most. Outside of this, this is the best void build to use for going about your business fast and easy. So there we have it. I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. But at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a demo for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.